guys and gals, welcome back to another Let's Play episode of No More Future. That's right, No More Future is back, ladies and gents, and I cannot wait to jump right back into it. But yeah, I wanted to let y'all know about my uh, affiliation with Green Man Gaming. Y'all click that link in the description, you'll get discounts on all the latest and greatest games, and I get commission from all the stuff you guys buy through using that link. And my lovely girl, artist girl, my lovely girlfriend is an artist, and she has an FA and a Twitter where she's taking commissions. I've got those linked in the description. But anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm Chan, you are up, and let's go. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. As you step out of the train into the radiant building beyond, you're greeted by the same colorful crowds as you're used to. The same city, the same people, the same emotions. If for once they're not at the top of your mind right now, after taking some steps forward, you turn around and smile at your canine friend, smiling and waving at you from within the train as she bids you off. You're quite fortunate to have people like her by your side, Helping you make sense of everything that's happening around you. Helping you feel less alone, less stranded in this strange world. And though your head was a maelstrom of queries and emotions but a few minutes ago, the raging seas have since calmed down and you can even, you can even afford a smile. Natalie's right, you reckon. Whatever Jasper and Bradbury were talking about earlier has nothing to do with you. You shouldn't worry about these two, those two mad, what those two madmen have to say. You have your own life, your own needs, and your own problems, and it's about time you started giving them the attention and care they deserved. However, as much as you'd like to do so, it's hard to take everything the Labrador had just said just said just now at face value. Even with your closest friends, it's getting difficult to tell where the truth ends and the lies begin. Oh. That's cool. And welcome back to the show! Sheesh, those ass just keep getting longer and longer, am I right? Which one is the oh, he's this one. Okay. And welcome back to the show! Sheesh, those ads just keep getting longer and longer, am I right? But the products keep getting better and better too, don't they? They most certainly do! A young fox and an elderly lynx converse amiably in the midst of a spacious room, an indistinct audience seldom reacting to whatever they say. It starts off simple enough. Bland product placement posturing for a normal conversation, some bad jokes, lots of bad jokes. Nothing unusual for a late morning talk show, you suppose. Cheesiness is part of the reason people like them. Right? Eventually, after some time, the script begins to branch out in a new direction. And speaking of products, the next one we're talking about has been on everybody's shopping list for a long time. It's the big if. It's the big if everyone's talking about with their friends. The Christmas present no one's quite sure they're ready to unwrap. Oh dear, you're not talking about that, are you? That I am. Today's topic of the day is synthetics. The elder host visibly shudders upon hearing that name, in spite of his younger co-worker's enthusiasm. Purr! I feel shivery already. Oh, come on. Synthetics aren't that scary. They're like steel-clad life-size dolls with a mind of their own. Doesn't that sound exciting already? Oh, excuse me. Well, that's one way to describe you, all right. Though like you're not the only one offended by it, a bit for different reasons. Except their minds are supposed to be human minds. Doesn't that rub you the wrong way? Freaky-looking androids running around town every day with real people living inside them. It's like the setup to a horror movie. Yep, they're going in that direction, all right. Are you following this? Were you following this program for the fun of it? Were you following this program for the fun of it? If there truly is such a thing, you'd have turned it off right there and then. But you've reason to believe things might get more interesting eventually, so you try to tune off all the garbage for now and hope that it won't take much longer to get to the good part. Android taking over the streets. How's that going to bother you when you live under a rock every day already? I don't know. Maybe you're right. I do know very little about synthetics, after all. What a happy coincidence! Then, then that, then that we have the head of the project in the studio with us today. Wait, what? Everyone, say hello to the most talked-about woman on the news these days, Dr. Mary Shelley. <laughs> A familiar feline enters the hall from the left amidst lots of weird visual effects. The audience cheers. Oh, the audience just cheers in an uncharacteristically wonky walk you've never seen her do before. You feel quite a bit of second-hand embarrassment for her if she wasn't feeling more than enough first-hand embarrassment already. You hope she is at least getting paid for this gig. Hi, it's me. I'm the woman everyone has nightmares about. The female host laughs at Mary's joke alongside the audience, but in a practical way that doesn't feel quite natural. Not even a moment after letting the scientists sit down, the conversation begins again. Well, good morning, Dr. Shelley. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. One second, y'all. Drink time! Hmm. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. Oh, the pleasure is all mine, I assure you. You're not sure if that was her poking fun at the situation or not, but some of the audience chuckled nonetheless. 
The hosts are not as amused, unsurprisingly. Anyway, we invited you here to talk about your latest invention. Uh, my special garlic lemon vodka super blender? But I thought I kept that project secret. That sounds equally concerning, but no, actually. We're talking about synthetics. The latest innovation from the great minds of Pandora. <sighs> Mary chuckles at the woman's almost robotic words, a curious look on her face. Ah, uh, that one. Sorry it's been so long since I've, uh, since I've been asked about it. I'd practically forgotten about it. But yes, all jokes aside, I'd love to share more about our newest invention with you guys. In fact, I'd be delighted. Just as soon as your buddy gets a hold of himself, anyway. As if on cue, the camera focuses once again on the links in the corner. He's half hidden behind the desk, staring daggers into the scientist in a way that feels as exaggerated as it gets. Uh, keep your snobby keep your hands off my brain, demon. Quickly starting to pick up on why the shows like these need a live audience. If there wasn't laughter every time these dudes made a joke, you would never realize they were trying to be funny. Mary tries her best to retain her composure in spite of the situation, or maybe she's just following the script that they are that they are in her own way. Oh dear, I'll have to start from the very beginning, won't I? Please, if you may. Luckily, what follows is something you're a little more accustomed to, perhaps a little too much. Just the usual string of questions you hear the feline answer time and time again. Who she is, what she does, how long she's been working on the project. They then go into the meat of the synthetic project. Sort of. It's more or less the same pitch Mary gave you when she visited you on your deathbed almost a month ago. How much time has passed since that fateful moment in your life? It feels like an eternity's come and gone all the same. Although that's probably just the boredom that you feel right now getting the best of you, if you had to guess. Speaking of that one synthetic everyone's talking about, what can you tell us about this Isaac? You're suddenly snapped back to reality by one of the Fox's questions, taking you completely by surprise. Before you can wonder if this is where it's all been heading to, Mary begins to answer. Well, what can I say about him that I haven't already said before? He's just another synthetic, same as all the others before him. Although, I bet he considers himself to be a bit more dashing than the rest, if I had to guess. I'm sorry! You ask out loud from the comfort of your seat, knowing full well none of them can hear you. And of all the things Mary could have said, did she really need to say, well, that? This better be the part of that nonsense script they're reading, or else. As you begin to think of the atrocities you could commit on that cat next time you see her, the conversation moves on from where you'd left it. Well, he certainly is different. I mean, he's out here, while the rest of them are elsewhere. <sighs> Why in the world is that? What's so special about him? The feline takes a moment to answer that question, looking almost genuinely surprised to receive it. Well, you should know, Isaac was particularly insistent to go back to his old life, or so that all the others combined. I decided it'd be fun to fulfill that kid's wishes all, or perhaps enlightening is a better word. You've already learned so much from seeing him interact with others, and there's so much more yet to discover. Just thinking about the potential of that of that kid and this technology has me rather excited. You're a little surprised by Mary's enthusiasm. So starkly different it is from how she was talking about a few moments ago. This doesn't feel like a script anymore. Maybe the time for blindly following a teleprompter is over, and the scientist is finally allowed to answer questions whichever way she feels. Of course, that only goes for, that only goes for her. As if despite the cat's passion, the professional contrarian raises his grumpy voice once again. Well, what if I don't want to interact with this Isaac? Why should I or anyone else have to participate in the science experiment of yours, Dr. Shelley? And just like that, all the warmth disappears from Mary's face and all the joy from her voice. Oh, well, I don't know. It might help you grow a pair of balls, for starters. After a brief collective gasp, a steep silence encroaches on the audience. The host looks as bewildered as you are, more genuinely than ever before. You have a feeling this little outburst from the cat wasn't pl wasn't planned by the show's writers. Before anyone can react, the scientist quickly takes over the conversation. I mean, can you imagine what it's like for the poor kid, being surrounded by people who view him as nothing more than a scary monster? I don't think it'd be pleasant for anyone, much less someone who literally endured a dying just to get to this point. The old man tries to interject. But, but what if... He starts running around and killing people? Yeah, that seems to be the general worry right now. But come on. It's been almost a week now, and hardly anything has happened. People have taken photos of him at the train station, in grocery stores, at restaurants. Like we all just decided he was some kind of celebrity, instead of a normal kid who with wants and needs like everyone else. I'm just saying, if what he truly wants is to kill us all, it's gotta be pretty low on his list of priorities. The hosts exchange some worried gazes, which are barely picked on by the camera. The fox tries her best to wrestle the reins of the show back from the unexpectedly feisty feline in front of her. Well, I can definitely attest that Isaac doesn't look half bad from up close. I actually snapped a picture of him just the other day, while I was visiting some relatives in Bloomberg. A high-quality picture of you appears on the screen behind her, seemingly taken at the train station while you're waving Natalie goodbye. You're probably meant to feel surprised or confused right now, and wonder how this woman managed to sneak a picture without you noticing. 
Instead, all you feel is sadness and rage as you recall what you were what you were going through at the time it was so carelessly taken. Hmm, I have to admit he does look pretty good from this angle. Mary's smile returns to her lips as if her rant just now was nothing but a little aside to the conversation at large. Fox is quite pleased to realize this. I know, right? I always knew I had a talent for photography. But enough about me. What about him? Do you think the world's ready for human synthetic relationships yet, Dr. Shelley? Oh. You have to rein yourself in really hard not to slap the computer screen while you close all the tabs. You've heard enough of this, what you reckon. That conversation, if you can even call it that, was going absolutely nowhere, in spite of Mary's best efforts. You have to give that woman credit for where it's due. She did try her best to make a statement and improve your image, just like she claimed she would, even if it was ineffective. Sadly, all those people wanted was some cheap gossip and questionable jokes. Not even Mary's charisma could salvage that shit show. You finally let yourself fall unceremoniously on your couch, feeling completely drained. Your mind is a whirl of dumb questions without answers, yet you can't help but tackle them nonetheless. I swear, what is Mary even doing appearing on shows like these? I get what she wants. To, I get that she wants to try and help out and help out however she can. Public perception of synthetics included, but wouldn't it be better if she just uh, focused on her research instead? I just can't understand what game she's playing anymore. The stress and uncertainty plaguing your mind makes you feel as empty as a music player with no songs. Oh, excuse me. And in truth, this latest stunt from the feline has little to do with it all. It's almost been three full days since Natalie dropped you off at the train station. And you've had a lot to think about in the time since. Things like the events of the past week, your brief encounter with the owners, Jasper and Bradbury's discussion, Natalie's blatant lies and misdirection. There's no denying it anymore. As much as it pains you to admit it, something's amiss with your new friend's behavior. The way she showed up at the new relay train station of all of a sudden, the things she told you on the train, the specific words she used, like abomination of science for one, that's what she claimed you weren't in an attempt to raise your spirits. She made it seem like she was trying to disprove your arguments and dispel your fears. The only thing is, you'd never use that word to begin with. Of that, you're sure. Only Jasper ever addressed you as such, and she was never in the same room as him when he did so. He never told her he'd called you that before either. Somehow she knew the contents of your discussion with Jasper and Bradbury in advance, even when she claimed not to. Somehow she knew you were going on you were going home on your own before you even told Mary. Somehow you'd somehow you'd somehow you'd never put two and two together until the morning after the fact. Recording my every move it was the only possible explanation, and somehow it evaded you until that very moment, probably because you didn't even want to consider it at first. But that was the only way to account for all the strangeness that had happened recently. It explained why Mary had footage of her fistfight the other day, and even how she and Jasper appeared to quickly appeared so quickly after Bradbury first revealed himself to you. One second, y'all. Water time. Ah, oh, delicious. That's only scratching the surface of the iceberg. God, this is so messed up! Why would they even do something like that, without even telling me, no less? Unless those few cryptic words Mary shared with you when she first introduced Natalie to you were any indication. Just stick by your side wherever you go, and we'll be constantly aware of where you are, what you're doing, how you're feeling. At the time, you took it as nothing more than Mary being Mary. A simple joke meant to mess with you and her, ju and her junior boo and her junior both. Couldn't imagine she was actually being honest for once, and now that you do, what of it? What are you supposed to be doing about it? That's what you've been trying to figure out ever since, stuck in your apartment dreading any other place but your own. Laying motionless on the couch, surfing the web, eating snacks, evading the problem. One second, y'all. A little bit stuffy. If nothing else, your sudden bout of anxiety did provide an excuse to distract the scientist who regularly called you to make sure you were alright. Every time you heard Mary and Natalie's voices, they sounded just like they did a few days ago. Jovial and kind-hearted, yet well-meaning and careful. Perhaps too careful. If you're meant to know that you're being spied on, they're definitely not mentioning it often enough, or at all for that matter. Maybe it'd be easier to accept this reality if they were honest about it with you, but the fact that they keep acting as though everything between you is fine when it isn't is just unsettling. I mean, it's not like I'm entirely opposed to the idea. If this is necessary to help their research efforts, I'm alright with losing a little bit of privacy. I just wish they were straightforward with me about it. Why all the lies and deceit when they would, we could just be honest with each other? Unless I'm somehow missing something. Knowing yourself, you probably are. Or maybe you're not, and your friends really are as bad as they seem right now. Who knows? So many doubts, so little clarity. You get up from the sofa, shaking your head at yeah, sh shaking your head at your sore lack of answers, looking for distractions. You head to the mini fridge and open it, hoping to find a cold soda or two to calm your nerves with. But it's entirely empty, save for one last cold bottle of cold water. Well, for someone who's supposedly never hungry or thirsty, you sure did a number on your fridge in the past few days. A little upset, you fetch the water and head back to the sofa pulling the cap off the bottle and emptying it all in one stroke. As the fresh liquid courses through the back of your throat, you can't help but grimace. 
The family wants nothing to do with me. The heads of Pandora and the FBI act crazy every time I see them. And as if that wasn't enough, I can't even trust my own fucking friends. Yep. I didn't think it gets much worse. I didn't think it gets much worse from here. Eva Long engaged to the mini fridge in the corner of the room. Its emptiness perceptible even with its doors closed. This really isn't how you imagined your life would be when you decided to become a synthetic. It's not what you want it to be. And the thought, well, it's not pleasant, is strangely rousing in a way. I mean, it's not like I need to refill it or anything, but... I really need an excuse to get out. <sighs> I want an excuse to get out. I can't keep spending my days like this, doing nothing and feeling like shit. At some point, something's gotta give. Something's gotta change. You can't recall the last time you spoke to Apollo, Daphne, Nim, even George, and you were supposed to keep in touch with all of them. Even though your steps are still as heavy as your thoughts, you're done letting your doubts and worries paralyze you. At some point, you have to at least try to lead a normal, to lead as normal a life as you can muster. And it all starts, as ridiculous as it sounds, with going out for groceries. Another day, another walk down the familiar streets of your hometown. The sun's out, the sky's as pink as ever, some birds are chirping high on the roofs, and most people still give you weird looks as you pass by, as usual. Hey, look, it's that android! Quick, snap a photo! Ah, oh, fuck, it's looking right at me! Dude, really? I don't even have eyes to look at you with. You whisper to yourself as you try your best to ignore their very, their very audible mutterings. You think people would have learned by now not to speak so loud when you're right in hearing distance, and yet... Alright guys and gals, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Leave a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye bye